Hi everyone, this is Joan, and I hope that you're having a great and wonderful day. Well, I was looking again at the book of Malachi, and I think that I had a theory that one of the reasons why the tribes were scattered was because they wouldn't listen to the Most High's instruction when it came to marry within your own nation. Now, not marry within your own tribe, that was permitted to a certain extent, but marry among your own nation. You've got 12 of them, good grief, must be somebody in there that you can stand. Remember, marriage is not just this ooh-la-la romantic kind of thing. This is a way to keep your nation financially well off. How much money has left the black race? Because when black men get money, they don't take it home. They take it and they pretty much just hand it back to white men and then complain and cry about it. That's really irritating. Me personally, I can take when someone is upset and they say something about it once. I'll even take it twice, but that third time is really going to get on my nerves. Stop whining. Now, black men whine about the same thing that they do to black women. They whine about, well, you aren't, you other races of men treat me badly. You did this and that to me in slavery. Name one thing they did to black men in slavery that they didn't do to black women. Plus, black women got to get pregnant and give birth to women and men who grew up and said, well, I'm better than you because I'm not really black. Unless it's profitable, then I am black. But in any case, I would much rather be at the top of your race than the bottom of another one. And you know what? Black men have been totally complicit in that. But there is nothing that has that is happening now that hasn't happened in the past. And Heavenly Father already told you what he likes and what he does not like. And so what I'm saying basically, black men need to repent. You need to repent quick, fast, and in a hurry because we have going through things because of you. Because black women were already under a curse where we have to follow black men. So when they do something dumb, even if they're doing it to us and God says, okay, I'm sick of y'all, y'all going into slavery, we get to go too. That's, that is really annoying. And we have done it for years without complaint about you. We have thought also, well, it's not them. It's the white man, he's so hard on them. Is he easy on you? No, he's not easier on you. Like I said, not only whatever happened to the black man in slavery, Jim Crow, whatever problems were coming up, you had to suffer them too. And you had to suffer them these same problems with black men singing songs about your nappy hair and black skin and how they don't like it and all this other stuff. So, when you read Malachi, the second chapter of Malachi, when you read it closely, you realize that part of the reason why this stuff happened was because black men will not stick with black women. And again, you don't have to think somebody's beautiful to marry them. A woman doesn't have to look at a man and say, you're the strongest man in the world to marry him. This is a way to keep your nation strong. Everybody else realizes it. What is the problem here? Except being a son of Adam and accepting that. But anyway, if you read Malachi chapter 2, verse 10, it reads, Have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? Why then are we faithless to one another, profaning the covenant of our fathers? Judah, specifically Judah. Judah got a problem. Judah has been faithless, and abomination has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned the sanctuary of the Lord, which he loves, and has married the daughter of a foreign god. Now, you think that this is a minor thing, and some people will say, well, no, it's the daughter of a foreign god. Well, she's a daughter. That's a bloodline issue. And anyway, if you read the Bible, nations all had their own gods. That's why I used to think when I was in the hall, well, you know what? If God came to me it, after he split the Red Sea and I was a foreign nation, I'd be like, well, hey, can we follow you? Well, you could follow him, but you're going to follow him under his own natural children. 
But that's another story altogether. When it says daughter of a foreign god, it means a foreign woman. So 12 continues, may the Lord cut off from the tents of Jacob any descendant of the man who does this, who brings an offering to the Lord of hosts. So God is telling you right there about this idea that black men have about getting their passports and they're going to go find these foreign women. Go knock yourself out. You already are doing that anyway. The Father got plans for you, and I suggest you repent before he enacts these plans. He, and as far as you saying that you're going to replace black women with women of other nations, yeah, you can marry them. You can procreate all you want with them. But the Heavenly Father says when you do that, he is cutting off from the tents of Jacob any descendant of the man who does this. And notice he says man. Okay, this is God speaking through his prophet. He's saying the men are doing this. Now, there might be a few occasions where a woman will marry outside of her race, but generally, or number one, rates are much lower for that. And number two, women generally wait to be asked. You, even if you asked a man to marry you, he can always say no. So basically, the thing is, this is a problem that men have. And as many people are Israelite identified or Black American, whatever you want, call, want to call yourself this particular week, uh, as many are saying, the time is getting short. We're getting out of here. Those 400 years are up. Right. Yeah, I agree. Uh -huh, whatever. But the point is, you need to get yourself straight or at least recognize what you have done wrong. Maybe that's what's holding up progress here. Because this does not make any sense that these people, these men can read all these scriptures and totally ignore the ones that say, hey, something's wrong with you. And it also doesn't speak too highly of the women who also consider themselves to be extremely religious and, and Bible versed and God loving that they also only read as far as, well, do what that man says. They don't ask themselves, well, like if that's what I'm only supposed to do in life, why do I have a brain? That doesn't make any sense. Why did God give me a distinct personality with motivations and, and things I want even beyond this guy? Why would I have that if I'm never supposed to use it? And why is it that in the Bible, anytime the word domination is used, it means a bad thing. But then these learned men keep coming saying no, except when it applies to you. But then they go and cry about, yeah, I went through slavery and they put me out the house for two years out of 400 and, and I'm just so hurt and it's, it's just set me back. Therefore, I should be able to go live in your house rent free and punch you upside the head and get you pregnant whenever, whenever I feel like it. And if you say something about it, because I go find another woman of another race who's prettier and smarter and smells better than you. You better not complain about it because you, you are, what is the word? You're bitter. You're bitter and you're just jealous because you're not as pretty. Okay, you know what? I don't care about your ideal of pretty. There's only one person on this earth I got to please and it ain't you. It ain't even me. I got to please the most high. He ain't said nothing about my looks. For a fact, when you go back, pretty much all the women, if you are considering them to be Hebrew Israelites or whatever, the women that were black were the ones, well, you know, they, he said they were beautiful. And I care a whole lot more about his opinion than anything walking around on this earth. So this is not a rant. This is simply how I talk at times. So. I think that this is something to consider. And it just came on my heart, like people say. Other people say that. I don't generally say it. I tend to think I was just, just this thought just came in my head that, you know what? These men need to repent because, you know, they quote a whole lot from the book of Second Ezra. And I just cannot imagine that they didn't read the scripture that said God was not too happy with them. In Esdras, I remember uh, Esdras is the same as Ezra. And Ezra, when they attempted to return back to uh, rebuild the temple, um, he was, I think he was a scribe. During the time of Cyrus the Great, he and Nehemiah 
were literally, especially Nehemiah. Nehemiah was punching guys upside the head, telling them, hey, you got to get rid of these foreign women. Now, this is not Joan telling you anything. This is Joan telling you this is what the prophets, the approved of the Most High was saying. And the Most High, unlike people or, or the DSM, one, two, three, four, and five does not change. He doesn't change. He said it back then. He still means it now. And this is Second Ezra five. For the first Adam, burdened with an evil heart, transgressed and was overcome, as were also all who were descended from him. Second Ezra four. For a grain of evil seed was sown in Adam's heart from the beginning, and how much ungodliness it has produced until now, and will produce until the time of threshing come. Consider now for yourself how much fruit of ungodliness a grain of evil seed has produced, when heads of grain without number are sown, how great a threshing floor they will fill. Now, I can hear you saying, well, you know, uh, when we were reading Isaiah and we were telling black women that these scriptures about how they walk around being uh, arrogant and stuff, you know, we know that was only applying to those women. But here, when it says Adam, it means both of them. It, it means both of them sin. Okay, well, let's continue and see. In Ezra 2, 15, Mother, embrace your children. Bring them up with gladness as, do as does a dove. Strengthen their feet because I have chosen you, says the Lord. What? You mean he didn't say, you bald-headed, you ugly, and you got all those children that got, well, I mean, apparently they must have gotten here by immaculate conception because I can't take no responsibility for it. That's what your men are saying. But it is not what the Bible says. It is not what, what does it say? Says the Lord, what the Most High says. So if you walking around here, women, with your head hanging down, feeling like, oh shoot, everything I do is wrong. I got to just go around here trying to please this man who I can't please him because he does not like me. He does not like what God gave me. He doesn't like my brown skin or dark skin. He doesn't like my big nose or my big lips or whatever. He can tolerate it a little better if somebody white says they like it, but as a general rule, he does not like it and he rejects it. You can go around and feel bad about that, or you can recognize that you got the same responsibility or the same game plan he does, that he has, and that's to serve the Most High, not him. And also, take heart in what the Heavenly Father says. I have chosen you. He's saying this to the mothers. He's not saying, well, you know, you you had sex with this guy, but he's totally, he's, he's innocent of this child. He has no responsibility for him. It's your fault that you're a single mother, even though it took both of you to make him. It's your, no, father did not say that. So you can go around listening to these guys, but these guys need to repent. And you do too, because you have been, instead of trying to look it up and find out how could a a loving God make a whole half of his population and say, y'all are fit only for slavery. You get to do all the work and take all the blame. That's not a loving God. That is not the most high. So anybody who tells you that, you really need to examine them. And you really need to examine things for yourself. So you notice, I am saying this to both the men and the women. So, to continue on, and I will raise up the dead from their places and bring them out from their tombs because I recognize my name in them. Do not fear, mother of children, for I have chosen you. You hear that? The Most High says I have chosen you. So every man on this earth can say, I don't like you, won't make a bit of difference because the Heavenly Father says, I have chosen you. I will send you help, my servants Isaiah and Jeremiah. According to their counsel, I have consecrated and prepared for you 12 trees loaded with various fruits and the same number of springs flowing with milk and honey, and seven mighty mountains on which roses and lilies grow. By these I will fill your children with joy. So, you have hope. You have hope, mothers, because the Heavenly Father is not calling you out of your name. Anybody who does is not a representative of Him. 
So therefore, why listen to him? So in chapter 2 of the book of, Ma book of Malachi, Rejoice, O mother, with your children, because I will deliver you, says the Lord. Now look at the word deliver. Why would he deliver you unless you are already in some sort of travail? Life for a black woman now is a life of travail. It's a life of, well, I need to have a boyfriend so that the other men don't beat me up, but then I got to worry about him beating me up too. And then I got to worry about paying bills and stuff because he thinks he should, like this guy made a video about teaching men how to go mooch off of women and have a free apartment. You know, this man feels like I am something to use. You know, now let me refine that. I think everybody should be useful. It's just that he doesn't feel he should be useful. He feels he should just use you as a placeholder until he finds someone paler. And he will start with maybe brown when he's poor. Then he will go to mixed as soon as he makes the money. And as soon as he gets a whole lot of money, he's going for white. That's pretty much what they're doing. And if you think it's a new thing, you definitely need to read the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. And also Esdras, because Esdras is coming right out here in the second chapter, showing you that the Heavenly Father recognizes, of course he recognizes, but he's saying he will deliver you. He wouldn't have to deliver you if you were not having problems. But let me continue. Rejoice, O mother, with your children, because I will deliver you, says the Lord. Remember your children who sleep, because I will bring them out of the hiding places of the earth and will show mercy to them. For I am merciful, says the Lord Almighty. Embrace your children until I come and proclaim mercy to them because my springs went over and my grace will not fail. Now you notice he's basically giving the children, he's saying the children are the mothers. Remember your children who sleep. He's not saying remember you and your baby daddy's children who sleep. He's basically giving the children to you that they are basically when a child is born he needs his mother i'm sorry he just does uh he needs his mother to feed him you can give him formula but the best thing you can give him is his milk his mother's milk um a lot of times especially if a man is a good provider he's spending a lot of time outside the house if he provides enough for the woman to stay home well the children don't see him as often. The first few years really do seem to belong to the mother. And again, I'm not making that up. That's what I observed. But this is what the Heavenly Father says. Rejoice, O mother, with your children. It didn't say we just rejoice parents. It said, O mother. So think about your position, women. You don't have a second class position. You have a power position, and you have the same game plan as the man, and that is to serve the Most High. So this is just something to consider, and uh, let me know what you think. If you can do it without cursing me out, calling me names, I'd really appreciate it. But, you know, most people don't do that as much anymore because, not because of inner any inner morality or sense of responsibility to other people, but because it's not allowed. But uh, in any case, I do welcome your comments and your thoughts. And uh, you guys have a great rest of your day. This is just an aside, just something I saw. And you know, you know what really irritates me? Black men who marry white women or non-black women and then want to proclaim how pro-black they are. And this one, this particular guy, this is just my personal opinion, he wants to take that to Africa. Now, Africa has enough of its problems. It has enough of its own black men there already running amok. And he wants to go there with his non-black wife and his mixed children and basically replace black women because when they marry out, that is really what they're saying. Like the parents of Samson asked him, what, you mean you can't find anybody among your own women to date, to marry? No, I want somebody else. Well, he wants to take this same ideal to Africa. And as I said, Africa has enough problems already. I wish they wouldn't let him in. I mean, I know Africa's a big place. Just keep him and his mindset out. 
because there's a book written many moons ago, I can't remember who, but it was called, it was about black men's struggles and it was called No Place to Be Somebody or something. Actually, it may have just been a line from Native Son. But anyway, I remember reading it thinking, wait a minute, black women have no place to be somebody because if we go to other races, of course they have sense. They're gonna favor their own women. We come back home to our own men and they're basically saying we favor the other women too. And you know, it doesn't take a great brain to figure out. Historically, white people don't care about black men marrying into their race when they have money because they recognize when these men marry into their race, they're probably not gonna live as long as the women do. That money that they, because this is their country, handed out to these black men is gonna come right back to them. It's gonna ricochet there. So they don't care. And also, since they think that black men are stronger, black genes are stronger, they feel like, okay, you know what? You go lay up with the women that we don't really like all that much anyway. Um, and you have children. Those children grow up, marry white. Then their children marry white. We have some of your strength. We have all of your money. So why would we care? In fact, we want you to do this. We're going to use reverse psychology on you and tell you, no, no, stay away from her. When actually, if you're poor, we don't mind giving Becky to you if Becky is what we don't particularly like. Because we know you're probably... Well, it used to be you would work harder for Becky. You'd get up and you'd get a job and do something, try to have a decent home. But even if you don't, Becky's children will probably marry back into the white race and they still have your genetic strength, or at least they used to say you had genetic strength. I'm not sure that's still something because, well, because. So, like I said, this is very annoying to me. It's bad enough you want to do it in this country, now you want to go take it over there. And then you see something like this, where uh, this school counselor, now he's reporting this particular story. His, this school counselor files charges on a 10-year-old. Why? Because the 10-year-old hugged her. Oh, wow. And this he sees this happening, but he still even if he never says a mumbling word about race, the fact is you can search it and find out for all his talk, he still rejected his own women. And if you think about it, when you look at the black race, the black communities in the US, some of them are doing well even now, but many, many more are not. So what kind of person are you when you see your community sinking, instead of doing something, adding your strength to it, you run for the hills. What kind of person does that? And I also kind of think, well, what kind of person would marry somebody who does something like that or would leave a relatively, comparatively comfortable life to come do that with you? That something is a little strange about both, but as I am black, I tend to look more at what the blacks are doing and like I said, this to me is deplorable behavior. It is like a rat, duh, what is it, a, a rat, uh, what is it? They always desert a sinking ship. I don't think the black race is a sinking ship only because the savior's coming. Otherwise, I would say sinking, it sank long ago. And it wasn't because of the women. Because men, the race travels on the men not the women. Women can be strong as they want to be. You could say, well, they're all Wakanda warriors or whatever, which to me is the stupidest thing also in the world. If you have to have an army, wouldn't it make sense to get your strongest people to go be in the army? Not the ones who, well, if they get captured, they can get pregnant. Every month, they get real moody and crampy. And what's more physically they don't have the strength but we're going to put them on the front lines and make them fight does that make any kind of sense like i said i, I don't i have no real as far as the message behind the, the black panther movies i truly didn't like them i really had a problem with a, a grown man in a cat suit that just seemed insulting but then again i don't think much of a grown man in a spider suit either but in any case 
this time is final. And if you listen this far, thank you. You're so kind. I truly appreciate it. Let me know what you think. And uh, if you can, uh, yeah, uh, subscribe and like and uh, push the little bell. And uh, again, you guys have a great rest of your day.